The masses gather here to speak their peace. Some fall to the wolves. Others struggle and rise above them all. Enter into the sinister mind of our host. Dive deeper than any mortal has gone before. Bod's Mayhem Hour is upon us. This is Aaron. And this is Mike from Mind Collapse. And you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a very huge privilege to welcome Aaron and Mike of Mind Collapse. Mind Collapse will release their debut album entitled Delusions, which reflects the delusional re- nature of man via, nef- I know I'm going to screw this up, Nefarious Industries. Also, check out their debut single, Empty Void, which this is their debut album. They've got a debut EP. We're going to talk about all this stuff. So, Aaron and Mike, how's it going, guys? Real good. Thanks for having us, John. Good, John. Thanks for having us. Yeah, not a problem whatsoever. So, my collapse former from Arbogast, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that. How did this come about to go into my collapse from this? Well... How far should we take it back, Mike? <laughs> uh, we, me and Mike met probably about, would you say 15 years ago? Um, uh, actually through a, a mutual friend named Mike. And uh, <laughs> we uh, briefly worked together. And, and that's how I met Mike. And um, we hit it off and um, we're like, you know, it knew his past as far as like, you know, being a drummer and touring and stuff. So um, me and Mike and Mike all got together and just jammed a couple times. And um, <clears throat> then, uh, you know, uh, Mike, Mike, the guitar player and I might get a little confusing, but um, <laughs> uh, we ended up writing like uh, what became the first Arbogast EP. And uh, uh, yeah, then, then Mike, Rate joined us full time and uh, banged it out and uh, recorded that EP and uh, we ended up doing a couple EPs as Arbogast and then a full length uh, as Arbogast on uh, Nefarious Industries um, and really got to know Greg uh, from Nefarious during that time and, uh, and enjoyed working with with him. So you know we had a little bit of a past. Me and Mike have been in in a couple other projects as well um but um yeah mind collapse happened it's eight years now which seems crazy but um we just uh, after after the other mic from Arbogast uh moved away uh we just kept we kept at it um that first mind collapse ep was just a lot of riffs that we had laid around for a long time I finally got them all together let me, let me jump in with there because I think I think there were a couple good spots that we um, so we did this Arbogast uh, band we had a full length we released it on Nefarious and then the other Mike left and so Aaron and I we we were literally just without a guitar player so we re, we released an EP under Cask C A S K so that was a two piece band that we did we played for six months eight months Drummond then day. we. Then we tried, uh, we messed with a couple other guitar players. We did a band called Maranoan, where we recorded eight songs, I think it was, also with Andy Nelson at Bricktop. Yeah. Um, and then that just kind of di- uh, dissolved. And then that's where Aaron and I just kept jamming, kept writing riffs. We had, we went through two guitar players. The first guy who wrote, helped us with the first one and this one a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then basically right before the, what was it, maybe six months before the pandemic or eight months, we got Justin, which is our latest guitar player. And and he kind of helped recraft these songs, which are now the full length. 
<laughs> I know this is a crazy question, but after the eight years of all this, do you guys finally feel like you've hit your stride or are you just still scratching that surface? That's a great question. Um, I'm, I am super stoked. I feel like we are finally hitting our stride. I feel like we've had these, I know personally, we've, I've had some of these riffs in the hopper for a very long time. It's just very cathartic to get all of this out of us. And, and we've been working on these songs and uh, like Mike said, you know, we've, we've gone through some guitar players. We had Ed uh, was our original guitar player, um, helped us with a lot of riffs, was on that first EP. Um, we had um, <clears throat> Eric, uh, Eric step in for a few months, um, played some really cool shows with him and he had a really uh, great energy. Um, and then uh, Justin uh, came in this picture. Man, I want to say it was like a year and a half though, because I know we ended up working songs that we had and Justin just kind of put his own flair on it and took everything up a notch in my opinion. Um, and then really we got it polished and uh, got into the studio uh, January, 2020. Um, the first week of January, 2020 is when we recorded delusions um, with Andy Nelson uh, down here in Brick in Chicago at Brick Top Recording. Uh, Andy is an amazing engineer. We've, uh, this is our third or fourth album we've worked with him and mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's, he, he always just knows how to um push us just right you know um as well as um you know he's always got some great suggestions and and everything is just seems very easy he's very easy to work with in my opinion but how excited are you both to have this debut album, Delusion, get ready to come out June 24th? Because I know this has to be a lot of frustration that you guys went through, plus having to sit through the pandemic, having to wait to get this out. But how good does it feel for the both of you to finally say, ah, it's here, let's go, let's be done and move on? Dude, it's, it's undescribable. <laughs> Maybe yeah, it's really nice. It's, <laughs> we've been, we were ready, the pandemic it, it put us at, uh, it, it was a delay for us. So it feels really good to finally kind of start revisiting and put this out into the world and getting people to start listening and responding to it. So it feels, it feels really good. Yes. It feels awesome to finally, finally get it out there. Yeah, man. I was like, I, I was ready. You know, I thought 2020 was going to be the year, you know, we were, that was going to be a big year. So stoked for that. And, and it felt like up until that point, we had already been working this material uh a lot so it's 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 an amazing feeling everything's kind of coming together right now too so it's 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 really exciting you know uh, really appreciate you talking to us john and um yeah and um our buddies in illuminated brew works which is a brewery here in chicago um we're we're gonna be able to do our uh, album release show in their tap room that they just opened a little over a year ago uh with our buddies in this band called coke goat um, so that just came together and uh, I just feel like it's, you know, the perfect album release and, uh, you know, with, with friends and, and we love good beer, we love their beer. So, uh, <laughs> very, very stoked that, that everything is, is coming, is coming together now, hopefully, you know, <laughs> yeah. hopefully yeah. it all doesn't fall apart. Yeah, exactly. And that's on the 18th that you guys are going to do that live, um, uh, Illuminated Brew Works, the, the yeah. release show. So get that in there for you guys too. <laughs> Appreciate it. So what led the track Empty Void to be the first track released off this album coming out swinging for you guys? What, what was it about that track that you guys said, that's going to be the one? Yeah. I mean, honestly, you know, it's, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of a crapshoot coming out of the studio and you, it, it wouldn't have been my first choice going into the studio like that. I always dug the song, but you know, I, it probably wouldn't have like vision the vision like going out into into the studio that probably wouldn't have been like the first single that i thought we were going to release but uh after it was recorded and everything like i think we all just just you know decided that that was that was the banger that was the one that that we that we really that we really liked the most out of it um and i think that might have you know in part to do that with um the fact that 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 was the most recent song that we had written for the album 
So that's kind of the newest one that we had. And that one really has a lot of uh, original Justin stuff in it. So um, it's a good, it's a good kind of um, preview of what's to come. We already have about, uh, you know, close to 20, almost another, uh, almost another album written. Um, and so you could expect it, it's going to be like a little bit more in that vein of Empty Void as, as to maybe some of the other tracks. But I mean, it, it, it all meshes well, in my opinion. Uh, Mike, what do you, what do you, what do you think about it? Yeah, I think we it's it's um it's not as straightforward. I feel like it's sort of a a risk in a sense because I feel like it requires a little bit of patience on the listener to at least get into it and and stay with us for the journey. But I think for the people that would be interested in make it you know the whole way, I hope they're actually going to be really interested and like the influences um, and. I might be jumping ahead, but like, this is the middle part. I think like Aaron was mentioning, it's, it's, we were probably 60 to 70% done with it. And then you, after you go through the studio, you know, they sort of get like a little bit of life from Andy and they take this new life. Um, and so we, I feel like it just has, there's like three or four different big riff uh, references in there. I think where it's like clear, distinct style. So I think it's a fun fun journey for people that want to kind of stick along with it so you got to have those peaks and valleys through albums and i've said that and i know people are probably sick and tired of hearing me saying that but it's the god's truth you have to have these peaks and valleys and if those hooks don't catch you you know then what's the point i mean that's just my opinion i agree now you talked about this just a little bit are these all brand new songs or songs that did not make the debut self-titled EP? Or let's talk about that a little bit. How much is left in the vault that you put on this? Yeah, these are all brand new. Um, you know, the I don't even know. I think Bonesaw was the the is the oldest that was written like right after the EP. Um, and oh, wow. then yeah, and then all of them are um written in there that like i said you know kind of had some riffs laying around for years even before the ep that we were able to you know um mix into the mix into the bunch here so it's it feels good to to get all that out of us and um you know and it, i i always like to you know have a clean slate for the new stuff too so that's always fun so. sure and, and i hear and i'm i've interviewed a ton of bands but I hear a lot of them talking about they have enough material right now for three plus albums. And I'm going, are we really going to see the light of day of these albums? Because who knows what their mindset's going to be a year from now or two? You know, are they going to say, well, let's put this out? No, let's do some new stuff because I'm sick of that. You know, right. uh, that's that's not where I want to go. But is this album, this new stuff that you're working on, is this eventually going to come out though? Is this what you want to put out at for now? Absolutely. The, the, the new, the new songs we have written, we're actually um, <clears throat> playing them in the set uh, now. And we're just that, you know, there was, there was talk of, do we kind of hold on to these? Do we just play all delusions songs for, you know, for the album release and, and kind of going forward to push the album. But um, we're really excited about the new stuff. And um, we, you know, being able to get, get out in front of crowds and play that stuff is just ultimately going to let us hone that material. Um, and um, and that's kind of the plan is to just hit it really hard. Of course, we're going to be playing on all the the tracks from Delusions. Um, but, um, you know, we're going to have these new ones in there, really banging them out, um, getting them tested in front of crowds. And then it, we were even just talking, Mike was just, saying like all right after the show let's just focus on recording these new ones so we're 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 hoping to get get on that this summer right away that would that would be ideal and any tracks that did not make this album we can see on another album or an ep down the road possibly that you guys stuck back and said well let's save this one we went for it put them all out there um yeah just wanted to get it out there and uh 
Yeah, I mean, there was talk, you know, there's always kind of talk. Do we hold one back for uh, a comp, you know, or, or a split with somebody? But ultimately, we just wanted to to get all the material out there and just have a really solid, you know, uh, chunk of music out there. I think the goal was to try to get around 40 minutes. So I think we hit that. Are you guys comfortable being a three piece band instead of having like four to five members or are you, are you eventually going to add more or are you just comfortable right now with just the three of you? I'd, I'd say it's definitely comfortable. I'm, you know, always interesting in, interested in expanding um musically and if that means adding more people like i'm all for it i would love to look i mean you know when we do the records and stuff you know there's definitely two guitar tracks on there so it would um certainly open to having another guitarist come in um <clears throat> uh, and or you know a keyboard player a wacky percussionist you know really whatever where i me personally i'm pretty open to like experimental stuff and um yeah but but you know it just scheduling and and you know lives and and stuff and it's it's you know, more people the more <laughs> the more difficult everything becomes more gear bigger van uh yeah what do you think mike two piece <laughs> yeah, that's that's why Aaron and I were a two piece right away, because uh, it was just like, you know what, there's too many, too many schedules um, to just coordinate with everybody. But yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, we'd have we'd have two guitar players, a keyboard player and and it would just be out there. But, I, you know, as, so as a three piece to answer that originally, yes, I think we are comfortable as a three piece. And I think we know I, th I think we kind of understand that what we are is the three piece and the roles we're playing. And so we kind of just can build off that where Aaron may be more rhythm. So Justin can do more of the lead stuff. Mm. Um, and so I think that's, we're able to play with that. I think, especially with Aaron's ba bass tone, it's so massive. It's just such a, such an awesome bass tone that we, it can almost double as like a rhythm heavy baritone rhythm guitar so so yeah i think we're comfortable as a three piece and in a perfect world we'd love more people but yeah three is we feel good with that any track standing out more to you than any right now on this album i know these are your babies and i know you want to get them out there and be done with them but mm -hmm. are there any that sticking out for the both of you personally as as far as your favorite song on it oh okay cool. <laughs> The one that you saw go from infancy to childhood to adulthood that you're like, man, I'm, I'm proud of that song. Yeah. Personally, for me, I'll start here. Uh, Empty Void, like right now, is is my favorite track. Um, and, that you know, that's a big reason why we led with it. Not, not because it's my favorite track, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I think that was the consensus. Uh, but. Yeah, I really dig it. And like I said, I just wasn't quite sure going into the studio how that one was going to turn out. We know we wanted it like a big epic ending type of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really proud of that one. I think that one's that one's really cool. Um, I'm proud of the whole thing, though, honestly. Um, put a lot of a lot into it. Um, but but that one, yeah. I really dig. Yeah, think? I think there's like... I think what we tried to do and what, what was kind of fun about hearing Justin's uh, studio stuff is the song sort of took on, there's like, there's fun overdubs and there's melodies and all these songs and like different textures that, that make them all pretty unique. I don't think they're just like heavy songs. I think they have some pretty neat textures in them. Um, Cause I like death spirals. I think that's a great song that, that's another like we take three or four sort of feels and and we turn it into one cohesive piece unraveling is another song that was like that's been that was probably one of the if bone saw wasn't the oldest that might be the oldest one that has taken on a totally new life but it's also like empty void where it's like another six or seven minute epic song and so i think they're you know, but then Bonesaw is awesome to be the ripper because Aaron and I are kind of big on doing those fast, 
thrash song. So, you know, it's, I think we got it. I'm, I'm really happy with the album. I think this will be, this will be cool for people to hear. I want to hear what people think. So. Was there a track though, that you were working on that totally ended up sounding different than what it was intended to when it was first brought to the table, which one was that possibly? I mean, I'd say unraveling. Uh, that it's gone through a lot of different iterations over the years. Uh, probably still has an old Arbogast riff in there. Um, it does. Uh, it, <laughs> but, uh, but honestly, even when it, that was, I think that was kind of the, you know, last minute, as far as like last minute tweaks go. Uh, I know there was one part where it was like, uh, maybe we should, you know, beef this up, jack this, this part up a little bit. And, um, uh, yeah, going in there and then, then coming out, you know, we put some samples on it and, uh, had some big riffs, some, uh, vocal processing and stuff. And like, yeah, it really, it really turned out differently than, than like, like I said, previous, uh, versions of it that we had, that we had jammed on and we'd been jamming on that one for, for a long time, but, um. I think it turned out really cool. I, it, going in, it was kind of like, ah, this might be the one that you know, I'm kind of over. But then after all was said and done, I was just like, uh, I'm digging it. <laughs> Did the pandemic help the band take more time to have more creativity on this album to, to spice it up more what you guys are looking for? And I, I know that I hate that we had to go through this, but did, did it give you that extra time, you think? Well, we had some kind of odd timing, I, I guess a little bit. I think the pandemic hindered us more than helped us. Honestly, uh, we recorded that first week of January 2020 and um, basically we got all the music down and uh, I did the vocals uh, on my own. And I think that if we had if it wasn't the pandemic, um, we could have gotten together a lot more freely and, and, and knocked out the whole thing a lot quicker. Uh, but, but we did a lot of zoom and a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth with, with Dropbox and, and sharing tracks and being like, okay, what do you think of this melody? What do you think of that? How, what do you think of this track take? Um, so it ended up taking almost six months to, to complete the vocals from when we started record, uh, you know, had finished the music. And I think that um, had there not been a pandemic, it would have gone a lot quicker. Um, and then as far as like, yeah, we were kind of secluded. We have, you know, young ones and, and old ones around us. So uh, we weren't, you know, getting together a lot and, uh, um, I know we do have, like I said, we have like all these new tunes in the hopper that we're super stoked to, to get out to people. But I just, I just think of like, oh man, what more could we have done <laughs> in that time? Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Mike? It was nice to take a break, not from band stuff from the world, but. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, because Aaron and I, I mean, really, we were, we've been basically jamming together every week, every other week for eight or so years, at least, you know, so it definitely put it a hindrance and we were a lot slow moving because of it. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, I think it's, yeah, it's always good to take a break and get a refresh. So I, I mean, in that regard, I think it helped us get sort of a new perspective, but as far as, you know, there was still about a year where we were just, finishing what we probably could have finished a lot faster if we were getting together, but what I've live and learn, I guess. Yeah. You, talked, you talked about this a little bit earlier. You teamed up again with Andy Nelson, who recorded the album at Chicago's brick top recording. How is working with Andy and does he get something out of you guys that maybe somebody else might not get? Does he get the band exactly what, what, what you guys are looking for? I'd say so far. Yeah, man. I, we love working with Andy. Uh, it's just powerhouse. Like I said, like, I don't know. We, we've worked with some other people 
and it felt clunky. Mm. Um, with Andy, there's just tell him like, I'm kind of thinking this and he nails it within that first, first couple, you know, tries like, well, maybe like, could we have the effect sound like this or something? And like, he knows exactly what we're talking about. He's on it. Um, uh, as far as like mixing goes, I know the first maybe couple times we worked with Andy, we sat in the room and like watched him mix and this and that, I think I even fell asleep once. Um, but, uh, you know, at this point, uh, he, he just has my utmost trust. He, he, he does all the mixing on his own and stuff and just, uh, you know, sends us some, sends us a, a mix and it's usually perfect, honestly. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what, maybe one or two versions after we get, you know, everything in place, you know, maybe one or two mixes sent to us virtually. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's just, uh, we, I really enjoy working with Andy. There's like a cohesion. I don't know what he's, he's just a really good, he gets it. I mean, cause Aaron and I are both in other bands. So we, we've recorded outside with other engineers and there's just something smooth with Andy. And he always, I mean, my drums always just sound so good. I feel like after he records them. So I'm like, why, why do I even want to mess with this? Like if anyone can do better than this, like, I mean, bring it on, but like he, he's, he just gets it so well. Um, and the, yeah, like Aaron mentioned too, like that's the other thing I think where it's, it's one thing to maybe have him set up sounds, but then when we say, here's what we're thinking of doing and then he gets it and he gets it like really fast, then that's, that's perfect. I mean, that's what you want in your engineer, someone that'll just <laughs> finish your sentence for you and be like, okay, yeah. we're done. Let's move on. So yeah, he's, he's great. And also Andy knows like he won't let us just, uh, he won't let us slide on a take, you know, if, it, if it's not up to par, he's gonna, you know, that's his re reputation too. I mean, I assume that's what he's thinking, but uh, yeah. you know, he, he's just, you know, he'll just let us know like, yeah, you can do better or or something like uh, on the first EP, I know there was like, I was doing some vocals and like, I kind of had like a weird voice crack thing. And he's like, that's amazing. I like wanted to redo it. And he's like, no, that's amazing. So we ended up keeping that. So really trust his opinion. And, um, and he's not afraid to, to, to push us to that next level. If it's not, if it's not up to, up to par, like I said, so we, we, we appreciate that, you know. What's the growth musically, guys, you've seen from yourselves working on this album versus the debut self-titled uh, EP? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, having Justin, uh, you know, in the, in the project now um, really, again, like kind of took us to this, this next level of, we, I feel like the EP might have been a little more looser, punk, grungy, uh, kind of doom and uh, and then you know now having um, Justin in it it just seems like we've gone a lot like more maybe traditional metal uh, or just like it's just a lot uh, I don't know tighter heavier sound we brought in brought in some some uh, some ripping guitars the first EP we were pretty loose it was kind of like getting it out there and um for, for lack of a better phrasing, <laughs> getting it out there. But this one, we were really, I feel like with Justin, he he's part, um, I don't want to say, he's got good attention to detail. So, you know, like, so he wants to go through the different parts and he's like, maybe this doesn't hit as well as we we planned. And so we, we end up going like verse to chorus and be like, is there a better transition that we could figure out? And so I think that they had just like the extra dedication my hey, boys are going nuts that, that extra dedication to like the riffs and the transitions are just it's like an extra attention to detail that we didn't we were just going i don't know we were just more punk in the first time and i think for this one we finally were like all right let's just hammer down and focus a little more so we're for more, we're more focused we're trying to do a little more like more nuanced parts and to add more of that texture than I think we did in the first one. It's definitely the most polished album that, you know, I've been a part of 
writing, you know, creating, recording. Like uh, we really, we really took our time, obviously six years later, but hey, two of those were (laughs) kind of just kind of waiting. So the artwork and layout for the album was done by Sean Knott, uh, I guess, of Child Bot. Let's talk about that a little bit. How was the work with him on this? Did he get exactly what you guys were looking for? Yeah, Sean's awesome, man. Uh, Child Bite's amazing. Um, we, you know, uh, the for our EP release for that first EP, we actually the the show was opening for Child Bite. They had a small tour with uh, Snafu, um, uh, another band, another great band from Detroit, like super thrashy, uh, cool dudes. Uh, they just signed to uh, Housecore. Housecore is that the Phil Ensemble? Yep, House Corner. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, they just released a, a really, really good album on that. Um, but uh, yeah, man, we did. You know, we've known Sean. I've always admired his work. I have it hanging up in my house. Uh, he's a, he's an amazing artist. Uh, his attention to detail is is is, is rad. Uh, and um, you know, he put up a post like. <clears throat> I think like maybe close to when the pandemic started that he was taking commission. So I hit him up right away and said, Hey man, let's do this. And, uh, you know, gave him the music, gave him the lyrics and kind of just let him do his thing. Um, I can't say we, we edited much, honestly. Um, it, it, you know, he came up with the, with the concept and everything. And, uh, um, yeah, it it was, it was cool, man. And, and child bites rad. (laughs) What do you both hope everyone takes away while listening to this new album or just any of your musics in general? What do you hope they get from it, guys? I hope they get pumped, man. I hope they, you know, I hope they have a good time. I hope it's uh, an interesting listen to them um, and, uh, you know, not just cookie cutter metal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I hope that... Um, Man, you know, I, I hope that people dig it. I'd love to get, we'd love to get some feedback um, as well. Cause you know, you never know what other people's impressions are of your music until you kind of release it. And then uh, they're like, Oh, so you're a hardcore band. Like, well, I didn't know that. I thought we were shoegates, you know? And, but uh, uh, so I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Like it's, it's all exciting to get it out here and, and to be talking about it and, uh, like just hope people check it out and dig it. What do you think, man? Yeah, I think you hit it with the cookie cutter thing. Like I think we're we want to get heavy. We want it to. Cl- it's clearly heavy, but we want it to be um, experimental. You know, I mean, it's not. I feel like it is. It is a little bit out there, and we're definitely trying to use as many of our influences as possible. And I think that shows. Um, through all of our playings, all the different parts. So I, I, yeah, I really hope people just get pumped. I really do. They appreciate the musicianship and they, uh, and they, they really listen to it. So that's what, that's what I hope. Now I know you guys still have a lot of albums that you listen to. And even growing up, you had a ton of music as well, but do you still have that go-to album or song that you find yourselves going back to and listen to you? You just can't kick it out. You have to listen to it eventually every now and again. Oh, dude. How many, <laughs> how many albums can I tell you? I, mean, <laughs> I still, you know, honestly, during the pandemic, I, I, I got on this, this anthrax kick and uh, persistence of time came out right when I was just kind of getting into metal. And like, that was one of my first albums. I, I, man, that's so awesome. I love that album, but faith no more is, is a band that I can go back to anytime and just be happy uh you know angel dust and real thing just amazing and then um you know i i still go see danzig and belt out uh how the gods kill every time you know that he comes around um i can't get enough of danzig or the misfits and all that stuff like still holds up to me and i still revisit it yeah you and i I always say man take that opportunity to go see these legendary icons because it, you don't know from week to week or hour to hour. So, and I, I thank God that I actually got to see Danzig again Doyle on the 25th anniversary tour. So oh, I, I, have, <laughs> I have that in my pocket, my little, little yeah. pocket. Go ahead, Michael, you're talking now. No, um, I'm kind of across the board. Like, so 
Propagandi is someone that I've like, that was one of my first punk, like literally my first punk band that I heard was, was like Rancid's Let's, Let's Go and How to Clean Everything by Propagandi when I was like 14. I was like, how, how did I not know this was there? And that from that point on, you know, it was just like into punk. So that I kind of, Propagandi has been a band that I like, their older albums, Less Talk, More Rock and uh, Empire, Today's Empires, Tomorrow's Ashes. Like, I mean, all those albums, I'm, I don't know. I love those. I'm a big, I used to listen to a lot of Fat Records stuff. So I, I still like listen to, a, you know, a lot of that stuff. Um, no FX. Yeah. I mean, the you know, when I was first starting drums, that punk playing linoleum like over and over just to figure out how to get my single foot to play yeah. that fast. I mean, I just that was the song that I used. And because uh, that was another thing. It's like when you hear it, you're like, where, how the hell did this? How did you think of this? Like, where did this come up from? And then. Uh, and so, yeah, I still I still listen to a lot of that stuff. And, um, you know, I get through I just found some of my old CDs. And so I had a CD player in the house. So it's like finding everything from 25 years ago that I haven't listened to. So it's, I still like listening to it. Some of it's of course embarrassing, but whatever. <laughs> it got me to where I am. <laughs> there, there's some bands I know people don't like that I like, like ska. I like ska music, man. It's just it's so cool just to sit back and listen to the different variations of music like Hepcat. Good God. Yeah. So good as a ska band, the Mighty Mighty Boston's. I like those. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Rancid, you know, you talked about yep. it. Uh, you can't go wrong with Rancid in Kindles, Gob. I can go on and on and on about mm-hmm. it. But uh, yeah, it's so, that's cool. so. Well, that's the nice thing about music without to like get to, you know, it, there's, you don't have to be into a niche, you know, like we could all enjoy every genre. And like, it doesn't make us better or worse kind of for, you know, enjoying more music. And so I think that's the awesome thing about it is that, you know, just because we're metalheads, we can still love ska and a bunch of other random stuff. And I think that's, that's the way it should be. And that's the beauty of music. It like literally can transcend like anything, anything. Yeah, I've got problems. I can go from listen to ska, rock and metal to listen to Mark Yoakum. I don't know. All right, folks, please, you want to get out and check out Mind Collapse. They're going to be playing live on June 18th, Eliminated Brew Works, Chicago, Illinois. Delusions release show with Coke Goat. It's a free show, folks, free. No cash, no nothing. Come in, buy some brews, buy this album from these guys. Free. It's free, free, free. Also, pick up Delusions. That's going to be released on June 24th via Nefarious Industries. And check out everything that these guys got going on. So, Aaron and Mike, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy some merchandise, tour dates when you guys go on tour, all things Mind Collapse. How can they do that? Yeah, man. Social media, right? Uh, Instagram, hit us up, Mind Collapse. <laughs> uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, we post Facebook, Instagram. Uh, uh, give a follow to Nefarious Industries um, and get signed up for their, their newsletter and stuff. They release amazing uh music uh you know kind of all over the board um they have a lot of releases out and and he, he's you know he's got a lot a lot more planned so you know we're we're definitely nefarious fans here so um but yeah check us out on instagram facebook hit me up on email just shoot me an email let's chat before i let you go would you care to do a promo for my show guys love it this is aaron and this is Mike from Mind Collapse. And you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up. And you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link. And also, please, folks, we have a link tree that has all of our links on it. But also, check out our YouTube page. It has all this stuff that's on it. we got a lot more stuff coming up. And please subscribe to the YouTube page. Not, not just please do it. Just, just do it. It's really good interviews. I have a lot of great bands. And please check out Mind Collapse. Pick up Delusions. Pick up everything. Pick up everything that this band has out. And uh, you, you will not be disappointed. And also, folks, please, I'm also affiliated with Metal Inc., Form Obscura, and Diary of the Madman, the ultimate Aussie podcast. You will not be disappointed checking those out because these boys, they know everything about Ozzy Osbourne, like the shoe size, his birthday, you know, I don't know, when he eats, whatever. They know everything about Ozzy. 
But uh, Aaron and Mike, thank you so much for doing this interview. And I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. And any way I can help out, please let me know. Thanks so much, John. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it, man. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.